Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you Inky Savages are joining us for episode number 173 of the Penboy Roy Pentertainment Podcast. We've taken a few weeks off because life got in the way. We'll talk more about that later, but at the same time, my cat got sick and uh, some tragedy in the works, but you guys don't need to hear about that. But on the positive note, Tom was able to go to the DC Pen Show, so we're going to talk a lot about that, and I got some exciting announcements to make. So next Saturday's episode is going to be an interview with a very well-known Marvel Comics artist. He can be found on Instagram at Kreese Art, at Kreese Art. So if you don't know how to spell that, it's C-R-E-E-E-S-A-R-T, Kreese Art. Now, he's a cover artist for DC Comics in the past. He's a current artist right now, cover artist and comic book artist for Marvel Comics, He's done several titles that everybody may or may not be familiar with, such as Moon Knight. He also did the entire miniseries, five-issue five issue series of a comic that was recently released late last year called Tiger Division. And I purchased all five issues, and I thought it was a fantastic, fantastic miniseries. And the reason why we have him on is because I want to try to get him infected with the fountain pen virus. He uses Micron ink pens to ink his pencils after he finishes sketching his comic books and all that stuff. So we want to try to talk to him about how to use fountain pens with it. So he's an old school style artist. He's inspired by artists such as Mark Silvestri and Jim Lee, who are very well known since the 90s back when Image Comics came out and they started getting big and whatnot. So I'm really looking forward to that. Now, more importantly than just the interview, the interview is not going to be an internet-based interview or format the way we're doing it here today. This one, we're going to be doing it at the Gray Cafe in Bayside, Queens on Northern Boulevard. It's going to be at 1 o'clock, and we're going to be having the entire lounge area reserved. Tom is coming there so that we can all do the interview together. Also, his videographer and audio guy is going to be there, so he's going to be assisting with the recording of this historical and awesome comic event. I just would be a little careful, though, Roy, because you giving the date and time of when this interview is going down, we might be running into what happened you know, at the park last weekend, and we'll get a huge, giant mob looking for PS5s, and they'll be disappointed because they're not getting any pfs fives that sort of thing yeah yeah i don't i don't think that that's gonna happen no we don't think yeah so. so that that was a instagrammer i'm sorry a twitch influencer twitch video streamer, game yeah. yeah twitch streamer a video game influencer who unsanctioned just told all 20 million of his followers to show up at union square park and then what ended up happening was kids you know they're all kids they're young they're reckless and rambunctious they all just started fighting then they decided to start breaking into construction sites that are connected to union square park and then they started throwing equipment and tools and damaging property because there are so many of them they figure guess what we can do whatever we want we're not going to get in trouble so that kind of got out of hand i don't think it's going to be the same situation and I would love it for anybody local in the tri-state area, if you can make your way out there, 1 o'clock. We're going to be there at about 12, 1230 setting up. We're going to shoot some B-roll around the cafe. I didn't talk about it with the owner of the cafe. I mean, of course, I did talk about it with the owner of the cafe because <laughs> we're using her space. She's a good friend of mine. But I was also thinking that if we come there and – if, if people come there, mention that they're there for the podcast, then there will be a 10% discount. I'm, I don't need to talk to her about it. I'm pretty sure she'll go for it. <laughs> there will be a 10% discount on oh all products God. available at the Gray from coffee to cookies to specialty drinks and all that stuff. So if you guys can go, I would love to see you there. I would love for there to be a live audience. That would always be good. And we'll definitely take questions and do questions and answers at the end. So I have a plan for the episode. It's more than just an interview. I spoke to Kree's art, and he is also more than willing to demonstrate his artistic skills, while Tom and I will be there with our own pad of paper and pencil, 
and oh, yeah. we're going to try to draw what it is that he is drawing by wow. copying his, you know, like, let's see how badly I fail. I mean, Tom, you, you have a greater success. You'll probably have greater success because, you know, you are an artist. So there's probably a lot that translate that'll translate. I to I, what, I'm, I'm very know. much out of practice, though. So, yeah, I, mean, I know. I know. But I think it's going to be fun to talk about how he got into comics and also to talk about why he uses the equipment that he uses. Of course, he uses pencils. He's old school, so he uses pencils, he uses paper, he uses ink. He inks it out himself. Me, personally, I think that's really cool. I have honestly been dabbling and drawing again myself because I used to always want to be a comic book artist and I'm using Procreate on my iPad mm -hmm. because what I found was if you're inking your sketch what ends up happening is, let's say you sneeze and you make a scratch uh, using ink in the wrong direction, you ruin the page. Or if you're drinking a cup of coffee and you sneeze it onto the page, you ruin the page. You've got to do all those hours of work all over again. He takes that risk. He likes that better than using digital format, which I think is very respectable. But being that he is using digital format, I do want to present to him options in terms of fountain pens and different types of inks super black inks and stuff. So Tom put together Tom of gold spot pens, as well as Bryce of luxury brands of America. They're putting together a very nice care package for him that would complement his art style. Mm -hmm. And I just hope that you add inks that can are eraser resistant, right? Cause he'll draw something with pencil, cover it with ink and then erases the pencils before he submits them. And he spends a good 12 hours every day working. And I think that if we give him an ink that smears easily, that's really going to mess up his his game and probably piss totally him off. understandable. Yeah, so I hope that whatever it is in that care package, it takes, takes into account those things. So I'm a huge fan of Kree's art, C-R-E-E-S-A-R-T on Instagram. Please check out his artwork. He is absolutely amazing. And stay tuned next week if you are available and you're in the tri-state area and you don't mind taking out a drive or if, taking a drive over or if you're close by. The Gray Cafe on, I think it's about 192nd Street and Northern Boulevard. It's on the corner. It's a really nice cafe. They got the best matcha latte on the planet Earth. It's where I go whenever I want to just hang out with my wife and just chill and have a cup of coffee or have a matcha latte. I've never or, had a matcha latte you're going to have you to will. expose me to this. Yeah, you will, and you will enjoy it. So they also got a lot of non-keto-friendly snacks out there, which I don't really partake in because, you know, I'm super keto. Oh, I almost spilled my coffee, which is why I use Procreate to draw instead of a pad and paper. But, yeah, if you guys can come out, I would really love it. This podcast and that week's episode is also sponsored by Goldspot. Please check out the affiliate link in the description below and use coupon code LUCY at checkout for an additional savings on all products on the Goldspot websites with some exclusions applying. Again, the affiliate link is in the description below. Please check it out. I thank everybody who takes advantage of the affiliate link and coupon code in combination. It really does help out the empire that is the Pentertainment Studios. And last but not least, of course, we have to talk about Luxury Brands, also a sponsor of the Pentertainment Podcast. They are a very proud sponsor. Awesome Awesomely proud. The honor is theirs. 90% theirs, 10% mine. So now available for pre-order shipping August 18th, all Benu Cat's Eye, Tiger's Eye, and Hawk Eye's Talismans. Each unique fountain pen is dedicated to a popularized quartz crystal renowned for its distinctive natural phenomenon called Chateauyancy. Chateauyancy. These minerals highly sought after for their optical illusions have been surrounded by myths and legends for centuries. Banu therefore, consi that hurt. Banu therefore considered this stone a perfect fit for the talisman collection. Each pen is crafted in the corresponding minerals color with Banu's signature splash of sparkles and comes complete with a leaflet sharing the background story. So basically you get a little piece of paper with all the information on it. Banu is thrilled to introduce these new designs, showcasing the mesmerizing beauty and symbolism of these remarkable stones. I think they're gorgeous. I personally feel like I need to get myself the cat's eye one because I adopted a new cat. I actually named him Binu. Binu. No, really? I swear to God, I named him Binu. But wait, 
So it's not Benu, it's Binu. Right, I pronounce it Binu. But is it spelled the same way? No, B-I-N-U. It was at first okay. it was B-E-N-U. But okay. so the reason why I named him Binu is because so this cat, he was just dumped off in the streets. He was a house cat. He's about a year old, so he's still, I think, a kitten, right? That's qualified mm -hmm. as a kitten. He still behaves like a kitten. So what happened was his neck had, like, fur marks of a collar. So whoever right. had him before had a collar on him. Right. He became a year old, and then they dumped him in, in the middle of the street, and then he showed up to where I work, right? Mm -hmm. So... I think, I, I mean, we can't tell, we'll never know the answer, but I think that the reason is when I found him, he was unneutered. So what ended up happening okay. was he started marking around the, the home of whoever had them. They didn't want to okay. neuter him. They didn't have the money or whatever, so they just threw him out. But okay. this cat's temperament is very kitten-like, but he's also very non-feral. So he's very accustomed to people touching him, petting him. He does revert to like, You'll pet him for a while, and then all of a sudden he'll flip over and start playing, right? Like biting and, and pawing at your hand. It's adorable, but my whole, the whole, whole point is to say that he's very acclimated to social interaction with people. Yeah. So what I noticed about him was that he was very socially acclimated, and he was very clean, right? So he wasn't like a street cat that was feral. His paws were dirty or anything like that. If he was feral, I wouldn't have been able to just pick him up and put him in the carrier and then take him to the vet and get him, you know, situated so he can come home. Right. But if, since he was so clean and acclimated with people, I was able to just put the carrier down and be like, hey, go inside. And he actually just went inside by himself at first, hmm. like kind of, so that tells me that he was very socially acclimated. Whoever just dumped him out, I if they did in fact dump him out, they really missed out on an excellent, adorable cat. But so why cute. Binu? But why Binu? I want oh, to that's know. right. He was very clean. So pin, Pinu in Korean means soap. Ah. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, at first I wanted to name him Benu, but then I didn't want to accidentally keep calling him Benny. Okay. Not that there's anything wrong with Benny, but I was also th thinking the double meaning, like Binu means soap. And he's so clean because literally he, his upper half is like gray and black stripes and his bottom half is white and mm -hmm. his paws were all super clean. Now, my other cat, Oreo, he's a tuxedo colored cat. So he looks like he's wearing white socks. When yes. I first, and his, yeah, these white, all, you know, white chest. When I first got him many moons ago, he was about a year old and he was a street cat and his paws looked like they were a borderline dark gray, like, like my shirt. Mm -hmm. So I brought him home. I isolated him in a room for a while. I gave him a kitty bath, got, took him to the vet, got him all the shots, all this, that, and the other thing. And then what ended up happening was his fur that was white started turning white <laughs> and like white, like my AirPod white. And then, yeah. yeah. So that's when I decided to name him Oreo because like an Oreo cookie is black. Yeah and yeah, white black right and, black and white so yeah. that's why i named him oreo i thought that was really clever but apparently other people it really their it cats. really is it's not because yeah that, that's uh, neighborhood cats we like to name around here and one of them we picked out was a white and black cat and it, then we said oh it's oreo it's yeah. so easy it's such an easy name yeah but then I again that it's was... just because like both of us are on the same wavelength that right. we would probably do things like that right so also you know there was I thought, you know, my very first cat, as you know, his name is Garfield. And when I first got him, he was just way too premature for me to have gotten him. I, he was found in the middle of Northern Boulevard, Jackson Heights, crossing the street. He was so small. He was the size of a hamster. He couldn't mm -hmm. really walk. So we retrieved him and we thought there's got to be others around. There was a, a dumpster with a box with three more. So those oh. we adopted out. I kept a little orange one and named him Garfield thinking, wow, this is the most original idea ever. I have an orange cat. I'm going to name him Garfield. No one's thought of this before. No, but not at all. Yeah. So anyway, that this is a very long sponsorship read. 
but well, it's kind of like it's story it's kind of like sponsorship right, time. Right. Yeah, it's good. It's double so, double duty. So this is why I need to get the cat's eye pen. What I really need to get is the Bennu exclusive cat pen that has pan painted cats on it. Oh, I saw that. That, that one's two hundred and seventy five dollars <laughs> exclusively at Bennu, and I don't know if I can like. I don't know. Get For a, you, I feel like it's a little too cutesy looking. I, it, I like, it, like I feel I, like there needs there. It's too like too fluffy, you know. Yeah, no, I get it, but I I feel like I need to get that one. Because... I'm sure they'll do another cat one. I mean, they have the cat's eye talisman. I'm sure they'll do some other, yeah, like cat design. So yeah, so I I think I'm just gonna have to skip the intro because we've been talking about it. The talking. Well, we do have the to... disclaim, and we haven't That's come true. across haven't... any sort of potty mouth words mm-hmm. said by you and i but mostly by you but right okay so <laughs> let's 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 get to that let's do the disclaimer that was the longest but before we do that let's just wrap up the whole sponsorship section check out the gold spot affiliate link in the description below check out the banu talismans the cat's eye hawk's eye tiger's eye really cool oh, pens they're just a whole just keep your eyes out for the, the talisman cat's eye Tiger's Eye and Hawk's Eye, because they are certainly one of a kind. <laughs> they didn't write that. I'm just making fun of them. No, but keep your eye out for the Cat's Eyes, Tiger's Eyes, and Hawk Eyes. You see what I'm doing? With keep your eyes out for that. Keep your eyes. Okay. Yeah. Watch out for that so, shit, Toyans. Yeah, but anyway, before we get started with this week's episode, I want to give you guys a quick disclaimer. Oh, and don't forget, Wednesday, August 16th, 2023 at 1300 hours, we are going to be at... The Grey Cafe interviewing Kree's art of Marvel Comics. I am super crazy excited. It's going to be, a, it's going to be, we're going to be recording it there. If you guys come and watch, I would love to see you guys in person. I would love to, you guys to introduce yourselves. I'd love to meet you guys. Tom would love to meet you guys. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll have a and a session if you, if you guys show up, which, you know, I know that there's people all over the country that are probably not going to show up. But if you do, even if it's a one person, two people, that would be fantastic. We would love it. And make sure you mention to the the front if you're ordering any libations, snacks, cookies, coffees, lat- lattes, Bunch anything. Lattes. Right, so that they can go ahead and hook you up with a special 10% discount on all products at the Gray Cafe. Available just for that day. So, anyway. Yes, so... Before we get started with this week's, this week's episodes, I want to give you a quick disclaimer. This podcast is not scripted and therefore will contain potty mouth words, but mostly from me. Both from Tom and I, mostly from me. So be forewarned, you have been warned. Now, on to the podcast. The Pet Boy Roy Entertainment Podcast. Stage seven. All right, so we're back with this week's episode. We're going to recap the DC Pen Show, which I was not able to go to due to some just... Personal stuff that was going on. You guys don't need to hear about it, but you're going to hear about it anyway in the next 30 <laughs> seconds. Garfield apparently had an upper and lower res- respiratory infection, had an infection in his nose, and he developed feline asthma. So he was in and out of the hospital for the better part of like a week and a half. And by the time the DC Pen Show rolled around, it was just so, it was a difficult time. I got to tell you, because Garfield is the first cat that I pet that I had that wasn't like a fish, right? Mm. So when he was sick in the hospital, you know, my wife was crying and generally worried that, you know, he's just not going to make it because he's 15 and we didn't know what was wrong with him. It was very terrifying for us. They're like our babies, not to say that. You know, I'm not saying that my cat's lives are more valuable than anybody's children, yeah. but to us, they're like our they're like our babies. We love them very much, and it was very 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 hard time. And then by the time the pen show rolled around, I wouldn't be able to go and have fun. No, for two you don't want to like One, you don't want to like leave and then you know God forbid something happens. Yeah, and or, then in the yeah. you know and then we have to medicate him with clavamox, an antibiotic, every 12 hours for two weeks. So that started that started. Friday two weeks ago and he is just a very even in his sickest form he is not willing to take a syringe of fluids to the mouth and then we have to give him steroids and then a week ago we had to start him with an asthma inhaler with a kitty thing called AeroCat so it, you know I just I wouldn't be able to have fun I'd be worried about Garfield and then on top of that you know in the midst of last week you know, a guy that I used to work with, he was murdered in his sleep by his father with mental illnesses. 
just just shot him while he was asleep. So there was that kind of a little bit, little bit like, what the hell, man? You know, so yeah. like good, good kid and stuff like that. So that 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 made me very sad, and I just didn't feel like doing stuff, right? So there's a lot of stuff going on already. Right, it was a lot. It was a lot stuff. of stuff. So the viewing was yesterday. The, the funeral was today. It was. It wasn't, it wasn't the most easy thing to cope with everything at once, right? So yeah. I kind of just had to take a break. I couldn't gather myself. My brain wasn't functioning properly. You know, kid was a good kid. I worked with him from 2018 till 2000, 2021. Mm. And, you know, the kid always said hello to me. It was always respectful, always very hardworking. He was 26, year old, 26 years old when he died. It's just oh. super tragic, you know, like every time I saw him, he was super respectful. He would always, we would always greet each other. He would always greet me and he would always call me sir. And, and you know, just, just hardworking kid, excellent baseball player. He had a very, very bright path ahead of him. Everything that mm -hmm. he did, he did the best he could. So he was carving out a very, anyway, so anyway, he was, yeah. he, it was a lot. So I, I just had to take a break. But we're back. And, you know, how was the DC show, Tom? It was it was DC, as crazy as you could think that DC was. That's, well, that's why Friday was the day to go, for us at least. Uh, because Saturday was going to be too much. There's going to be a lot of people there. You couldn't have conversations with people. We couldn't have the space to breathe, basically. If we were, went on a Saturday, so we opted to go down Saturday, uh, Friday for the whole day. Went down with Kieran, went down with Sal. My dad was there. My mom, uh, my my wife, my two kids. They just they wanted to go this year. They haven't been to a pen show in a few years, mm -hmm. I think since before COVID. I want to say, uh, so they surprised me because I didn't really think that they were going to be down for. It. I thought it was just going to be going with the folks from work. But then they were like, oh, let's go down. So we actually decided to go down the night before on Thursday and stay at not the hotel the Pen Show was at, but like one of the ones that was like seven minutes away so that we could just go and they could do the pool and they could sleep overnight. They love going to hotels when we, whenever we can go. So they love just being able to uh, – my son still jumps on the bed. He's still small enough he could do that. My daughter's like basically an adult right now, so like her jumping on the bed's not feasible anymore. So it was it was a fun time. They they said that they had a good time, but I kind of got the sense that they were done with things after maybe like the first hour or so while we were still there for a whole 5 hours plus I think we were there for. So uh but definitely got had a lot of conversations, lots of lots of people I got to meet. Uh yeah, I gave everybody uh your your condolences for not being there. Mm -hmm. You know, people were obviously looking for my better half, not meaning my wife, meaning you. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I was like, oh, you know, Roy's got some stuff going on, but he wishes he could be here. And, uh, you know, I wish he could be there too. We would have had some fun, uh, yeah, running into people, been... uh, you know, Vanessa was there. So our, our buddy Vanessa and JJ was there. We just talked with him a couple weeks ago and he had his, uh, vintage, uh, thing, which I didn't go to because it was, I, I had left by that point, but he had his vintage thing later on that night. Uh, Mike Madison and just this whole bunch of people. I, I got to uh, talk to Drew Brown for a little bit too. Saw yeah. him towards the end of the show. Um, I totally nerded out with uh, seeing Salvatore from Leonardo Pens because you know how <laughs> much of a geek for Leonardo Pens that I am. <laughs> that I am yeah. So, um, but uh, but yeah, it's just so so much fun. Just and and really, I had a hard time just getting a sense for what pens were there. I didn't even really look that much at the pens. I was just interacting basically mm. just going from one conversation to the next and then running into people and then people telling me it's like, oh you know really loved like the the interview that you did with hemingway jones or it's like oh i love i watch the podcast all the time and then mm. it's like they just it's just so awesome just to know that the stuff that we do even though like we sometimes do things and we just send it out there we don't really know i mean you see like the the likes and the views but you don't really know that it hits with people to you have like a face to face interaction with people. Mm -hmm. It's really powerful, you know. It's very inspiring. Was Bryce there with luxury brands? Yes, yes. Yeah, I, 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 I talked with I Bryce. Missed, that sucks. I missed out on that. I, but you know, I've met, I've met him before. We've hung out. We've eaten together, and you know, I, 
definitely consider I definitely consider him a you know good friend and everything like that. Vanessa was there. I missed out on hanging out with her again and stuff like that. And the guys from Yaffa, I would love to have seen yeah. Yair. Dante and, was and, there. Oh yeah, I would have. I just I know I missed out on a lot. I just was not able to go. And I but I wish I did. I wish I had been there because there's there's certain people that showed up that I really feel like fuck I missed out. Like Carrie Bullet Journal was there. Yes, you yes. know what I mean. Like if I, yes. I, you know, that I if I was able to meet Carrie Bo- Carrie Bullet Journal, I, that would have you know. We been, got to yeah. flip through her sketchbook of Wonder oh, Woman. Oh man, she had her whole sketchbook there. But I, I was like, kids, kids, come on, because like my kids were with me at that time. I was like, you got to yeah. come see what she does here and she showed us all the the wonder woman sketches that she does and, yeah and she gave oh, us like man. a few uh postcards and i have a whole set for you after i'll give to you on wednesday uh oh, so cool. yeah so like i have a whole set so it's like just look give me the duplicates and i'll just give them to to roy yeah. so it's like yeah you know it's you know it's you know she sent me a, a wonder woman and captain america drawing that i i shared mm-hmm. with everybody a couple of episodes ago yes you know, so I mean, it would have been really cool just to like get, take a selfie with her and meet her, you know, and then go out and grab something to eat and then, you know, talk and chat and stuff like that. You know, we should have her on the show. She's a fucking fantastic artist. Yeah. I want to have her on the show, you know, if she's if she's up for it, you know, because talk about her. Like, how did she get to where she is in terms of her favorite superhero being Wonder Woman? Why Wonder Woman? Why, like, what is her artistic process? Because I see several different art styles, like shading, mm-hmm. hash markings. I see lineages from different different artists. Backgrounds and Back- styles, Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I see she's influenced by now, several see, different arts. There's somebody that we don't need to convert to using fountain pens. Like, she's right, already, she already well, doing whoa, whoa, whoa. She pens. actually does the one that's hanging on my wall above my shrimp tank over there. Mm-hmm. That one she did with Micron pens okay. also, right? So it seems to me that Micron pens is like a comic book inking standard because they come mm. with different tips. And we'll talk about it more next week with Kree's art. But what he was saying was that the ink of a Micron pen, when it touches the paper, embeds into the paper right away versus like a viscous ink like fountain pen ink. It's on top right. of the paper and then you have to wait for it to – seal and then if you don't wait long enough it smears which is true and Mm -hmm. the problem with that is like i said this this guy doesn't do one title he doesn't you know average comic book is 22 pages he's not doing 22 pages a month he's doing several titles he doesn't have time to ink something wait for it to dry just so that he doesn't smear it with his hand for the next segment of the the inking project that he's doing so it's critical that it's instant drying and it's permanent and doesn't smear, right? So I'm assuming that's why Carrie Bullet Journal used Micron Art on that amazing. Like I sit here, I always, I always just, I always look at it because one, it's got Captain America and Wonder Woman. At first, I, my thing was just like, can you just draw a Wonder Woman for me? Because I personally, I also like Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. I was a big fan of when I was a kid the Linda Carter series, right? Okay. Yeah. And I I was like five thinking, wow, she's hot. That might have been sooner than I should have been, but I, I <laughs> did think that, right? So, and then as an adult, when the Wonder Woman movie came out with Gal Gadot, is that how you say it? Gal Gadot? That's what Neve says. Because she's enough. Israeli. Yeah, he says Gadot. So when that movie came out, I was like in love with the Wonder Woman character there. And, of course, my favorite character being Captain America, she didn't even tell me that Captain America was going to be in it until I opened it up. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. They're both in the big <laughs> same drawing. So it's hanging up on my wall right over there. It's in a frame and stuff like that. You know what it is? I remember when the frame fits perfectly. I, I shit you not. The first time I ever got promoted – I had a certificate in that frame. I took that shit out and put the Wonder Woman, Captain America. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know how to buy frames. I don't know how to get frames. So They're like, this that, one fits. <laughs> yeah, this one's perfect. And and that, 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 that I put up on my wall, you know. 
Mm-hmm. Because listen, I don't need a certificate to, to no. know where I am in my in my career. I am. What the you, what you wanted was the the paper bills. You wanted the the stacks yeah, of cash. That, right. That's the important part that you're willing to keep. Yeah. The certificate. So. Yeah, you could throw it away. <laughs> yeah, and I know that I know that I, by not going to the show, I missed out on hanging out with Bryce and and the Yaffa guys and the Kenro guys and and Vanessa obviously because like whenever we whenever we get together, we got to go grab unlimited like Fogo de Chao and shit like that. That's what we did last time. It was a lot of fun, especially mm-hmm. with, you know, we would have all went out together. It would have been so much fun. I, yeah. It would have been. Yeah. But I would physically be there. I just wouldn't be there mentally. And I wouldn't right. be having fun. And it would not be the same experience. Like, no, it like it, it's, it you wouldn't. have to bring the you have to bring the pen boy Roy, and the pen boy would just not be out to play. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to talk to people and stuff like that. You know, yeah. like honestly, I'll, I'm not shitting you right now. Like, I feel hungover f- over for them from the last two weeks. Like, I don't even feel like I'm myself right now. Like, I, yeah. I'm scheduling things on top of each other. I'm double booking things accidentally and stuff. So. It's like my headspace is all fucked up, but I'm good now. I'm just, I'm just, you know, you know, shaking it off right now. It was, a, it was a lot, you know. I it's just life comes at you sometimes at like a left hook that you weren't ready for, and it just rings your bell. Yeah. But you know, you gotta, you gotta trek on and stuff like that, and and you know, you gotta roll with the punches. Yeah, I gotta roll with the punches. Sometimes they're yeah. haymakers, but you know what? Mm-hmm. It is what it is. But. So tell me about the – did you buy anything from the show? I mean this is the largest show in the world. If you couldn't find something to buy, then where can you find something to buy other than yeah. Leonardo stuff? Yeah, the, I didn't buy any pens. Okay. So, so that you're saying it right in a way – told Lou that you did buy something but not pen? I did. I did actually. It What'd was – uh, because of the fact that I wasn't looking myself, I had to have both my wife and daughter point out to me something they thought I would like. It was on a particular table. It wasn't – it was this artist that was there, and her name was Sophie, Sophie T. Mm-hmm. And I actually will share it on – there's a new episode dropping of the uh, Gold Spot video, the Gold Spot uh, Write Stuff video tomorrow where actually I'm wearing the shirt in the video Mm. it's a really cool shirt and i saw it i was like you know what you're right i like this i'm getting it Mm. and and uh and then we bought some stickers because my wife liked um she she finally got her kindle because we were talking about that Mm. um so she got her kindle early because it was supposed to be coming i think this week but she got it week previous Mm -hmm. and one of the things that she did with it was she got a case and she got a whole bunch of stickers that you would put inside the case. You wouldn't actually stick them to the outside of the case. You put them in between the case and the Kindle itself. So that way you could change them out. This is how she wants to do it. She wants to change them out seasonally. Mm-hmm. But she got some uh, stickers from this um, this vendor called uh, Sugar Turtle Studios. Mm-hmm. Which Sugar Turtle had. And I was like, I was like, I got to do business with this guy. His name is Tom, first of all. Whoa! That's right point number there, one. That right there, I'm sold. The deal. Right. That's, that's, that me and Tom's. Deal. We just get along. We just me are too. on the same wavelength. So my best friend growing I, up, his name was Tom. That's not you. We're, we're good people. We're I good people. Like so, cow. I so what happened was I was like I have to do business with this guy because he has such amazing ideas when it comes to making stickers out of pen related stuff. He had like. He had just some of the funniest stickers, and you can go check him out on Instagram. Let's see if I could drop the uh, what the, his Instagram handle is there. Uh, but he does all these awesome stickers. Turtle. Uh, see, it's Sugar Turtle Studio. So if you go to Sugar to Sugar to Sugar Turtle Studio on Instagram, and you can see all the different designs he had there. Uh, exclusive rickshaw bags, pen cases with his designs on there. He had uh, exclusive diamine inks. He had some mugs. And my wife was into some of the awesome stickers that were on there, which was like a uh, a, a Grim Reaper that had a nib instead of a scythe. Uh, like there it. was like a, the, a bottle of poison ink with two pens like crossed over it. Uh, there was uh, there was some other funny stuff. There was like a, a pigeon that had like a big pigeon that was just like it was weird but like my son really liked it so we just got it 
for that purpose. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it was just he had some awesome, fun designs on there, and and couldn't help but buy a few of those things on there too. But um, that was pretty much it. And then I felt like stickers in general were just kind of like the currency of things because. I was bringing around, I had a whole bunch of stickers. I gave out a lot of our uh, Pentertainment podcast stickers, the one with the aquarium that Eric did for us, and uh, and some I have. Well, I don't, I don't stickers. even have. Are you going to send me some of those? Because I, I don't could have, have sworn any. I sent I sent you those already, didn't I? Didn't send me any of those aquarium stickers. Oh, we got to. All right, I got to bring those too. I'll bring those yeah. on uh, on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I was I was handing those out, and people were handing me back stickers. So I I had I had some stickers that we were just like trading them basically. It's just like here, here's my sticker. It's like kind of like business cards. It's like here's my business card. Here's your business. It's my sticker. You know. So yeah, yeah that was it. That was all. I, That's uh, all I transacted. That's it. Did you stickers. go out to dinner with anybody or anything like that? With my kids and my family. I just went oh. to went to the rest stop on the way back, and we had the rest stop on the way over. We had some Panera. So, yeah, beforehand. so that's what I'm saying. If I went, we'd have to we'd have to all go to Fogo de Chao again. Yep. And then I'd have to it Was that the Brazilian place? Or? No, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Was it, that was the Brazilian place? Yeah. yeah, it's all you can eat. And, you know, you fl- so for anybody who doesn't know, Fogo de Chao is all you can eat. And then the you flip over style. the green card, right? And they bring you, like steak different type cuts of meats and stuff like that so you're mr auto your father with all respect intent intended he he thought he could out eat me last time i don't think mm-hmm. he was paying attention because he didn't out eat me but he thinks he did <laughs> so i if i went this time it would be to show him when it comes to the steak eating that he's kind of an amateur Whereas mm-hmm. I'm like elite level professional, you know. You could put back that stake. Yeah, yeah. So you know, with utmost respect to Mr. Otto, but at mm. the same time, you know, sometimes people need to know their place when it comes to certain <laughs> things, and you know, Mr. Otto might have the wrong impression of where he stands versus where I stand when it comes to who can throw throw back the most ribeye. Uh- Yes, right. the most amount of steak possible. Yeah, so anyway, but that sounded like – so how many days were you there for? You were there for two? No, just uh, – so we got there like probably around 8 o'clock on Thursday and then just mm. stayed the night, hang, hung out at the show on Friday, and then just headed back after we were done like five thirty, six o'clock around there. Just drove Okay. Back. How was yeah. traffic? Must have sucked ass. Um, yeah, Actually, I got I got pulled over after Mm. the delaware bridge Mm. um it was really weird because i got pulled over after getting through the easy pass and i'm like i was slowing down you know Mm. it wasn't like i was just deciding to gun it through the easy pass i was slowing down but but like the dude pulled me over right after the the and he was like you know the the bridge is like 50 and you i saw you were going 60 and then apparently at a certain point it was supposed to be like dropping to 20 and i was still Mm -hmm. going like 60 or like i don't but he was like but he just kind of was saying like this is what you did but i'm just gonna let you go with a warning because blah Mm -hmm. blah blah blah. and i was just like "Uh uh-huh okay like i'll take a it's just as long as everything else checked out and i wasn't like you know a wanted criminal in five states or something yeah i was i was gonna be free to leave but i just figured and it was funny because on the way back i saw on the opposite side i was like oh somebody else getting pulled over it's probably just like i just got the luck of the draw you know on the way there you know it's it's funny is i completely lost my train of thought Oh, no, no, not funny, but identity theft is a huge thing, too. Like, somebody could have, you may not know, may not have known it, but this happens where somebody steals your identity, commits mm. crimes, tells them that your their name is Tom Otto. Really? And, yeah, and then they get released. They don't show back up for court. Now there's a warrant out for whatever crimes that they were released for. They were supposed mm. to show up to court. They didn't, and now they're looking for a guy named Tom Otto. Really? And then they run your license, your name pops up Tom Otto, and they're like, this guy's wanted. So <laughs> make sure you're... Well, that would have been a fun turnout for this. Like, all right, couldn't go to the pen show. Why? <laughs> well, here's the long story of it. So apparently I robbed three banks. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I run an international ring of drug dealers. No, but so that, that you got to make sure your credit is all good. Make sure your identity's not stolen, just in case something mm-hmm. like that happens. 
I was yep. listening to something they were saying, I think it was the Joe Rogan podcast where he's like advertising LifeLock or something like that. And he's like, do you right. know that every three seconds, one person gets hit with identity theft? I yeah. can't imagine that's true because that like if there's 60 seconds in a minute, multiply it by 24 and that many people are getting hit. That's a lot of people. That might be actually more than like if I don't know what the math is. I don't have a calculator, but in one year, that's got to be greater than the actual population of the entire country, right? That's just like it's like isn't it like exponential? It just like keeps growing and I growing. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, well, I don't just think about think about like all the times that you get sent either phishing emails, text messages that have mm -hmm. suspicious links in it, phone calls from god knows where for like whatever you know they just they'll if you end up giving them anything you know they'll just pick up on the line they'll tell you like oh we got the 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 fbi is going to come and arrest you because you're back taxes or whatever and you need to get like 50 gift cards and blah 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 and it's just it's like it's just like it's you're constantly being berated with this stuff and yeah all it just takes is one person to screw yeah. up one day. That's yeah. all it takes. I want to do the math. If one person every three seconds is getting hit, then how many, peop how many people get hit in one hour? What's, how would we figure the math out on that? I'm stupid, so I don't know how to do the math. I don't this. know. I'm not, I'm not very good with So the if math. it's one every three seconds, then that means it's – so one every three seconds, there's 60 seconds it's in like a minute. 20, 20 a minute, is it? 20, 20 a minute. So 20 – times how many minutes in an hour 60 right so 120 in an hour right that's 1200 in an hour right there's in 24 yes. hours times 24 so that's Are you using a calculator because i would just yeah use a calculator. there's 28,800 in, in a uh, you brain, know what it's like you, you're, you're talking and now i forgot where i left off Sorry. so one every three seconds so that means in one minute how many did we say that was? Twenty. No, oh, we should just use Chat GPT for this. Let's just so do twenty that. in a minute times sixty in an hour times twenty four hours. That's twenty eight thousand eight hundred times. So we we got to an we got to one twenty four hour period. Multiply that by it's once every three, three seconds. 60, yeah. And then how uh, how many? Are stolen in a year. Let's see. If okay. So I got ten million five hundred and twelve thousand. Yes, that's correct. a lot of people. Holy shit! So verified million, by ChatGPT. Yeah. So ten million five hundred and twelve thousand people get their identity stolen every year in the U.S. That's a lot, right? Isn't that like? Because I mean, okay. So, oh, hold on one second. Let's see. Uh, all right, so uh, U.S. population is 331 million people, so it is roughly then 3.18% uh, of the U.S. population per year would be then victims of identity theft. All right, listen, I'm going with the number I got that I already cleared from my screen. It was like 10 million plus. 10 million no, that's fine, but, but I was just doing, because you were saying like what percentage, I was I was going to the next uh, thing would be what percentage of the of the U.S. population would that consist of per year? So that's like 3.18% mm. per year. So then by that math, then wouldn't over like 10 years and you'd have like one third of the population would be victims of identity theft? Because then you would just. Do I guess so. Times that's and... if that's if it never compounds. That means the same people don't become victims again. Right. Right. So, like they'd have to somehow these identity thefters have to identity theft the three percent, then identity theft from the remaining ninety seven percent, and not tap back into the original three percent. But I don't think they would do that just for the consideration of easy uh... math. Well, I mean, the thing is, though, <laughs> if if you're the victim, uh, you know, yields one time, it's low hanging fruit, so it might as well just keep going back at them. <laughs> so, yeah, three percent. 
I don't know. It's, it yeah. sucks though, because I because I've had I've had let's say my uh, cards compromised before, mm. uh, credit cards like stolen and being used, and it was at a very unfortunate time when I was actually trying to get approved for our home mortgage, and that's the only time, really one of the very few times that the banks will be looking at your checking account statements, and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden they'll see, oh, you just bought like three hundred dollars worth of medicinal herbal supplements online i see it's kind of odd shouldn't you just not spending that much on herbal supplements it's like um no that's fraudulent (laughs) right right and it'll 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 be random shit like that but anyway so Mm -hmm. yeah don't get identity thefted so be careful of who you give your information to because you also might they also might use your identity to commit crimes that's a scary one right so that sounds because, real, real scary. Right. So you don't have to deal with crimes committed by somebody else using your identity. Yes. That would be and really then get me up. fired eventually, you know? Like, well, who... <laughs> right. Me, that's the way to bring me down eventually. You know, it's like, well, don't oh, say I just that, have to commit that, identity theft. Don't say that because that, that professor from Vassar College <laughs> that wanted you fired for being on my oh, show. Geez. Yeah, you don't want him to hear this and then figure out, hey, you know what? Because he's a professor. He's probably really smart. He'll figure out a way to use your identity to commit, like, all kinds of frauds and stuff to get but the thing is really I just, if i just fired. told you about it then i know it's coming so guess what i'm already a step ahead of you right i will right. identity You're a theft you happens i will identity <laughs> theft you mr vassar college mm. yeah mr guy from vassar college whoever you are but anyway so you had a good time at the show i'm really glad to i'm really glad to hear that who did you catch up with did you catch up with anybody that uh I got to meet uh, Brendan from um, Atlas Stationers for the first time. Oh, cool! Yeah, and nice. He does, social, he does social media. He's like, he's like, we basically do the same thing. It's like, I know. We do. We just we we were vibing. We, uh, I think he's a pretty cool guy. Yeah, he's um, a cool dude. He's a he's a very chill, like yeah. fun guy. I got I to like see him. my buddy Scott, who's the uh, he's the the rep for Sailor, mm-hmm. and uh, and we I made a made a pen. Because the sailors, it, the, the Toya's table, the, you can make a compass pen from scratch. So, you know, oh, like shit. people like to do mixy matchy Frankensteining type of pens yeah. with their pro gears and stuff. So it's they like build a bear for pens. Exactly. So they right. had that available at the Toya table. And I was so excited about it. I actually had posted about it previously before going to the show. And then uh, Don, uh, who's the, the head of a Toya, and, and Scott were at that table. And we were just kind of like, wrapping things up for the day but he was like hey you want to build one like before we put all this stuff away so i was like let me get my kids because my kids will want to do that it's like yeah. I, I, you know me i got enough pens they i feel like they needed to have something to kind of remember the occasion i think this would stick out with them especially if they could make it themselves so that's mm-hmm. what they did is they picked out all the parts that they wanted and then they had um someone there that was dedicated to putting all the parts together because you still have to use like a uh, like have like a mechanical press machine to like pressure fit all of the parts like the finials and stuff together so they did it and they made their own design so it was pretty cool to see them mm-hmm. just you know be creative and figure something out that they wanted mm-hmm. so yeah that's yeah. cool man that's cool yeah did you meet ryan Krusak? i saw that you posted a Krusak pen I did. I, I, I went to go say hello um, because he's also as another guest on our show, and I was just um, – he was really the only table I felt like I truly – him and um, Carolina Pen Company with Jonathan Brooks was like I was just kind of mesmerized by the pens. Like I just couldn't mm. help but look at the pens, and I had my dad nearby, so I was like, I was like you got to just see the scrimshaw work on this. I mean it's not really like – he doesn't because we talked about his process in the podcast is like he doesn't go and hand make the scrimshaw on every single one he has it like computer you know laser but that's his artwork on there and he had mm-hmm. one that was actually he hand painted parts of it that was like a samurai thing it was mm-hmm. really really cool super super cool and i why I didn't you, you buy probably, one especially the kraken one uh like i admired it from afar but i just i you know me like i'm very very particular about what it's and i have something that is in my mind like i have to get something later this month that's coming in so i already have like one pen that's going to be on deck and i actually have to sell a pen for to make room in my case because you know i'm very anal Mm. about the whole what what pen pen is that um i don't know if i should really talk about it because i might create a lot of extra crazy work for myself and stuff so I'll, i'll keep it under wraps for now 
but like it's going to be exciting. Sure, cool. Yes. What pen is it though? <laughs> I can't tell you. Why not? It's not a I like, listen. This isn't like like movie scripts. It's a pen. People are gonna. I know. It's, you know, it, it's not the a end new result release. will be the same, right? The thing is, if I say what it's going to be, then I'm going to end up making a lot of drama for myself, and I don't, I don't want that in my life right now. So, <laughs> what kind of drama? What do you mean? It's go, it's going to create a lot of, it's going to create a lot of headaches for me. So it'll just, it's better off if like everybody finds out about it all at the same time because then oh, it'll be so easier. nobody else knows about it. That's no why. one. Yeah, no one else knows except for maybe like one other person. But that's like in in the gold spot realm. So you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it a gold spot exclusive? It's it's not a gold spot exclusive, but it will be available at gold spot. So. So if it's not an exclusive, then how is it that gold spot's the only one that knows about it? Um. Well, others would know about it, but the thing is, like, that's why I said, like, I don't want anybody else to know about it right now. Oh, so you're saying this is like something that retailers know about, but the general public doesn't know about? No, yeah, no one knows about it. So. Oh, okay. You'll tell me later, right? Yeah, we might we might be able to tell you later. That's, all right. I might be so, able to let you know. all right, I understand that because if all the retailers know and they're not supposed to let the public know, and then we announce it here, it's going to be problems. I get. What I you're I, ha I hate to be coy about it, but the thing is, is that it's if I mention what it's going to be, then I'm going to have at least like two dozen emails like of people who are like i want so i want this i want that like there's there's just yeah it's it's gonna be crazy so and then and then gold spot will then have an unfair advantage in terms of having people know about it and stuff that, right so that might be the case and also too is i don't want to set up any disappointment just in case like because it's a very yeah i i hate i hate talking to, like about uh, around it you know what i'm saying like i just i just don't want to like tease and make it so that people are like i really wish you would just say what it is already yeah <laughs> so. you know so talking about it the way we're i get why you can't talk about it because i have better insight into the industry and the relationships between distributors and, and retailers but the way you're talking about it now is far worse than just telling us I know. and then not telling and then saying i know it's, it's coming really... soon but whatever all right i can't come make you compromise <laughs> your your employment or your your contracts with manufacturers slash distributors so we're not gonna i just know it it's here. it's more or less it's more or less to shield my own my own productivity because i know it's going to absolutely plummet like i could do so many different things with people to like hook people up and stuff but i know that the moment i say what it is that i'm going to get that there's going to be like a whole horde of people that'd be like "Ooh, can i ask tom to do that too mm -hmm. and yeah because there was also so there's also this other thing going on with bryce so I don't know if you've seen on Luxury Brands's, this is a perfect example of it, is that on Luxury Brands' Instagram the other day, they they said, oh, we have this bottle of, the, you know, the Chu, the Chu Karo, Karo, I, I, Chu Karo, the, the blackest of the black pigment inks that they have from Platinum now, the, okay. the ink that's even blacker than Carbon Black. We're right. going to have a bottle, we're going to have a bottle to give to uh, Kreese, uh on on Wednesday. But what he also did was he, a couple of days ago, said, Tom, we're going to send Goldspot and a few other select retailers these sample 20 milliliter bottles of the Chukaru inks to then so then you could give them at, you know, like with orders, you could put them in if people order platinum pens or whatever, whatever way that you see fit, you could put them to your own use. So then like the day after he posts on Instagram and he shows like, oh, here's a sample bottle of the Chukaro ink. It's being sent for free to all these retailers, these five different retailers, I think Goulet and us and a few others, I uh, think Atlas and um, maybe uh, Pen Chalet. And it's like, we're sending them to these. If you want, you could hook up with these people and you could get your free ink. He made it seem as though we're just, not only first of all that we actually had them, but that we were just going to just give them to everybody that asked. So then I get like people hitting us up like on our DMs like asking about this ink. I'm just like we don't even have it yet. I can't, I don't even know what to tell these people cuz we we hadn't even gotten them in just to even like be able to put it together what we were going to offer them with. And uh but we are planning on offering them with a a special weekly dip promotion that we're going to do on the Curidas on Wednesday. So everything's happening on Wednesday, by the way. Wednesday's going to be an awesome day. So this is what we're doing on Wednesday. Is we're, we're going to offer the Curidas at a discount and then add mm -hmm. the bottle of ink free with that. And that's how mm -hmm. you would get it. 
but mm-hmm. not like in the form that he may have suggested in his Instagram, what was like, oh, if you just ask them, they'll just mail it to you. It's like, well, we can't mail a whole bunch of bottles of ink just everywhere. That's going to cost us a fortune, you know, right, postages right. these days. Right. So it's, you know, it has to kind of come with at least some sort of, you know, purchase involved. It has to be like a, you know, item with purchase. That way it makes sense to do some sort of business that way. Right. So, but that's the kind of thing that happens. It's like all of a sudden the cat's out of the bag, and it's like, oh god, it's just everybody pounces all at the same time. So, right, but there's two. There are two entirely different scenarios. Like this is one where, where he miscommunicated something and gave mm-hmm. people the wrong impression. Whereas your situation is, you have to be, you know, tight lipped about something because it's an agreement. It's almost like a an agreement between the, whoever this distributor or manufacturer is with all their retailers. And well, also you know. too is that the the other thing that I'm talking about that I'm keeping secret is I don't mm-hmm. know. I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, that we get everything that we mm-hmm. asked for. So it may not come. I I don't I don't know a hundred percent because it's such a unique opportunity that we're going to be getting everything. So I don't want to overpromise and then right. Let people right. Down. It's kind of the same similar protectiveness with regard to like pre-orders like you don't take pre-orders for that very same right reason. it's just because yeah. it you know things happen so right so before we sign off i just want I, if you guys if you guys out there are able i want to talk about this again because i'm really excited about it Kree's art on instagram he is so i know his real name but i'm not sure if he wants it public because he signs his artwork Kree's art Kree's Lee. So I'm not sure how he wants to be introduced or if he wants his real name out there. But we're interviewing Kree's Art Wednesday, August 16th at 1300, 1 p.m. at the Gray Cafe in Bayside, Queens. Make sure you come down if you can. We're going to do an interview, then we're going to do some drawing, and we're going to take questions. Uh, it's going to be a good time. And I would love for anybody who's able to go, who's local, to come. We can say we can say hi. We can hang out. Mike, there's Korean barbecue places that are nearby. That's like unlimited. We went there, right? Cast Iron Pot. Remember, we went there after yes. the the Long and Pen the, Show the a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, the Long and Pen Show. That, that you didn't go to this most recent one, right? The no, one I that didn't. I. Oh, that's right. That's right. I remember. So, you know, we could grab something to eat afterwards and stuff. It'll be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be so exciting. I'm so looking forward to this. Like a giddy schoolboy going to like his first fucking baseball game or something right or going to going to like Disneyland for the first time or something like that I'm like so excited and giddy about it check out his comic books Tiger Division check out other works that he's done Tiger Division I really like because it's it takes place in South Korea it's a team of super powered heroes they're they're all like Korean and they sprinkle in like Korean culture in there and stuff like that. I think that's kind of cool. I mean, you know, yeah, it, it it hits close to home for you and yeah, you know, you know. Feel, it feels like it gets got a lot of cultural tie-ins and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's so. it's got some things that I can definitely you, would, you, you know, identify with it. You see, right, right. Yeah. I relate. Yeah. I relate to it because you know, it's like it's like the main guy. His name is Teguki, mm-hmm. and he's like this like really good looking stud jacked korean dude hello yeah right you, you, so yeah. immediately <laughs> immediately relatable immediately i'm like this guy is this guy i i should be getting royalties right so anyway <laughs> he's in, i i must have he's inspired just, this character right even though he didn't know me but anyway it's a it's a cool comic book five five issues i hope they make it a regular series Maybe not. Who knows? Because Marvel does a lot of like miniseries and then abandons them, and to see how he does, how the title does, and stuff like that. But it was cool. I liked it. You know, cool. I don't think that. I remember. I remember. I think, back in the day when Image Comics first came out. I feel like, I feel the same way about Tiger Division as I did when Wildcats first came out, or the Young Bloods, or these these new, these new like team-based characters and stuff like that mm-hmm. I, I don't maybe it's because i'm an adult i didn't feel the same like oh man these are the coolest characters ever like cyber force i thought these are the coolest new characters ever i didn't really feel that way 
I feel like maybe it's also because the industry is so saturated with superheroes now that nothing feels new. You know what right. I mean? Well, they, but, they capitalize on a trend. So if they see something is trending right now, you know, especially in the 90s, like everybody was like, oh, you know, the once once stuff with Jim Lee was getting popular or yeah. Tom McFarlane stuff was popular, then you would start to see a whole bunch of very close – uh, you know, mimicked like representation. Right, of, right. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta say though, what Todd McFarlane did with Image Comics, I think, was the most unique out of all the Image Comics, like Spawn. Mm-hmm. Back then, that's super original, right? And it yeah. was really like the pinnacle of antihero, right? You, yeah. you gotta. And he was. Uh, I love listening to. He had an interview on the Tim Ferriss podcast. I loved listening to it because he, he's, he is salty. And mm. you just hear him and how he used to work for Marvel, and he basically, he basically resurrected Spider Man for Marvel, and Mar- like his, he, they gave him that book, and he turned it, and he made it like, he, I, he, he re, like imagined it, and then made it so that it was super popular again, and then, you know, Marvel was kind of like the establishment for him, and he just was like this, he was this guy that. You, you can't put a saddle on him like he mm. just is too wild and doesn't doesn't he's like a rebel so like you just hear how he just ends up pushing away with with marvel and then doing his own thing to to compete with them it's just so mm. fun yeah i mean it, just his concept also was very new every everything was either good or bad yeah and spawn was kind of a combination of both he was a a former ruthless mercenary soldier that gets killed goes to hell and is given a chance to live again, but in the form of this Hellspawn character that looks like mm. a decayed Spider-Man, I guess, right? With a cape <laughs> that's alive and shit. And he has a uh-huh. finite amount of magical powers. And then the way they represent like all this like heaven and hell, good and evil and stuff like that, the line is very blurred and it's you're rooting for a guy who was not a good guy who is a spawn of the devil and now he's against the devil so he's a good guy in that he's not with the devil or the, what yeah. they call the malbolgia I don't, I don't know where they came up with that name i'm not educated in like religion and stuff like that but it was a good very unique that and also i liked image comics the the savage dragon mm-hmm Right, so you hear me throwing around the word savage all the time. I guess it comes yeah. from that, and also comes from like watching a lot of UFC. You see a guy murk somebody, you're like, "Oh, that guy's a savage," mm-hmm. right? So that's where I, I do that. I get a lot of that and stuff. And yeah, I mean, I remember back then it was an exciting time for comics because innovation was happening. Yeah, and I feel like, I feel like, that innovation is kind of sp- like it's spread out spread thin now in the comic book world but then again i haven't read a lot of comics but i really enjoyed tiger division i don't feel like there was anything particularly innovative about the story but i did enjoy the art i did enjoy the story there was it was a very enjoyable mini series i hope they do continue it and i'm really excited about this interview that we're doing but we got to wrap this up so I hope we see you there. It's Wednesday, August 16th at 1 p.m. at the Gray Cafe in Bayside, Queens. It's on Northern Boulevard. I hope I see you there. Make sure you come up to us and say hi. We're going to have Kree's art. Really excited about it. I, that would suck if he flakes, right? He uh, got too busy. He has another I guess. Title I really... guess we're just going to have to record an episode of the podcast at the cafe and just be yeah. like, hey, what's up? We're at a we're... cafe. <laughs> yeah. This is a matcha latte. So anyway, we're yeah. just going to draw, we're going to draw random patrons of the cafe and give right. them our drawings. Right. But anyway, if anything changes, we will update using the Ink Journal and Penboy Roy Instagram page. So please pay attention which, to that. Which actually, speaking of, we, we did collect quite a few questions from the, uh, if you recall, it's a couple of weeks ago, I was asking for questions for the Pentertainment podcast. And there was like over 60 people that had commented on there. So mm. um, maybe we'll get to that at some point. Um, we definitely will. I just, yeah. I haven't been able to look at much. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, I got slammed over the head with stuff yeah. in, in, in stuff. But we'll so, get to it because I don't want yeah, we'll to leave people hanging. So yeah, no, we we'll definitely, we did definitely did not forget about you guys. So thanks again for joining us. This was episode number 173 of the Penboy Boy Entertainment Podcast. I love you guys. Be well, be safe.
Stay inky.